For me, the hardest part of putting on muscle is getting in enough calories. Meals like this big boy chili will make eating enough a breeze. With over 1,000 calories and 50 grams of protein, this meal will surely help you reach your daily calorie goals when you're bulking. Here's how you make it. Step one is to wash and cut all of the vegetables. In this chili is going to go a half of a pound or 227 grams of russet potatoes that you'll cut into a large dice. Peel them if you wish. I think peeling things is annoying though, so I never do it. Next, you're gonna cut one medium poblano pepper or 150 grams into a medium dice. Now, I've said in the past that I use poblanos just because they're cheaper. If you don't have those where you live, a green bell pepper will work just fine. For a garnish to place on top of the chili, I'm going to cut a medium jalapeno or about 20 grams worth into thin slices. This is purely to make it look nice and is an optional step. Next, take one small to medium sized onion of 150 grams and cut it into a small dice. A quick tip for all of you cry asses, if you leave the root end detached while you cut your onion, it will leave the tears in your eyeballs and not running down your face. Another garnish for the top is going to be some diced green onions. I've got four stalks here or about 20 grams worth that I'm going to cut into thin slices. And lastly, I'm gonna take four cloves of garlic or 15 grams and use a microplane to grate it down into a fine consistency. Now that the vegetables are out of the way, we can start cooking. Heat a large pot over medium high heat and add to it two pounds or 908 grams of 8515 ground beef. Flatten it out in the bottom of the pan and allow it to start browning. I know many of you will want to choose a leaner beef to help keep that fat count down, but I would urge you to stay with the 85% lean stuff for a couple of reasons. Number one, the extra fat is what we're going to use here in a bit to cook the spices and the vegetables in. And two, it's hard to eat a large amount of calories without the use of fat. To get to the 1000 calorie mark using primarily protein and carbs would make for an uncomfortable volume of food for most people. When the beef is about 90% of the way done, create some room in the center of the pot and allow the fat to pool in the middle so that we can bloom the spices. Add in 2 tablespoons or 16 grams of chili powder, 1 tablespoon or 8 grams of smoked paprika, 1 tablespoon or 6 grams of cumin, and 1 teaspoon or 3 grams of cayenne pepper. Mix the spices into the oil and cook them for about 30 seconds so they become fragrant. This chili isn't spicy, but if your tolerance is low, leave out the cayenne. Next, you're gonna add in your peppers and your onions and mix that into the spices and beef. Once those have been stirred in and the spices have been distributed, you can grab the 15 grams of garlic, add that to the pot, as well as the 227 grams of diced potatoes that you cut earlier. Next, pour in one cup or 200 grams of dry rice and stir that in. I know rice isn't a common addition to traditional chili, but that's part of what helps this one become big boy chili. It adds easy calories to boost the energy density. Once the rice is mixed in, it's time to add all the liquids and get this stewing. To the pot, add 29 ounces or 822 grams of tomato sauce, 14.5 ounces or 411 grams of petite diced tomatoes, 14.5 ounces or 411 grams of beef broth, and 15.5 ounces or 439 grams of red kidney beans. I realize off the tongue those sound like weird measurements, but those are standard can sizes here in the States. Stir it together to incorporate those tomatoes and beans, and now I'm going to move this pot back to the big stove to get it out of the way. While back there, I'm gonna bring it to a boil, cover it, reduce the heat to medium low, and allow it to stew until the potatoes soften and the rice cooks through. Now a quick break, cause daddy's gotta pay some bills. Hey you Muppet. Me? Yeah you, don't you wanna be stacked? I guess so. Well then start sleeping better. Don't you know about Helix Sleep? Any time in my life I've made appreciable gains in my strength, performance, or size, it can be tied to points in my life where I've gotten good sleep. Everybody knows you've got to train hard and eat well to grow muscle, but so many people overlook the importance of sleep. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are custom fit to your needs and delivered straight to your door. I don't know how they fit a mattress of this size in the box. They got to use some sort of dark magic. But inside that box comes the mattress as well as a little booklet. But who do you think I am? Ernest Hemingway? I'm not reading that. Helix has a sleep quiz that will fit you with the mattress based on your sleep preferences and body type. Give the quiz some of your stats and it will spit out the mattress perfect for you. I've had my Helix mattress for a few months now, and what I like most about the mattress is the Glaciotex cooling cover to help keep me cool at night. Each mattress has financing options with flexible payment plans as well as a 10-year warranty. The mattresses come with a 100-night sleep trial to make sure that you love it with a full refund if you don't. So if you're in the market for a new mattress, check out the link in the description below where you can get $200 off plus two free pillows and free shipping within the United States. Shout out to Helix Sleep. Now while the chili is on the stove stewing, let's make the cornbread. To a large bowl, add one half of a cup or 60 grams of all-purpose flour, one half of a cup or 72 grams of yellow cornmeal, one quarter teaspoon or one gram of salt, and one teaspoon or four grams of baking powder. Mix that together until everything has been well incorporated. Next up, you're gonna work with all of your wet ingredients. So move the dry ingredient bowl out of the way, get out a smaller bowl, and crack in one large egg. 
Beat that egg until the egg whites and the egg yolk are mixed together, then pour in 1 4 of a cup or 48 grams of sugar, 1 half of a cup or 120 grams of milk, and 2 tablespoons or 30 grams of a neutral oil. Give that bowl a heavy stirring to make sure that all the sugar is picked up off the bottom of the bowl and it is dissolved into the other ingredients. Then you can pour those wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and mix it together until it is smooth. I'm going to make these into cornbread muffins so that I have five equal size servings when it comes meal time, but if you wanted to make these in a cake pan, you could do that. Spray your wells with oil and then pour in the batter to each of the five wells. These are going to get baked in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius for about 15 minutes or until the tops start to brown. Now in showbiz, this only takes a second because look at this, our cornbread muffins are done. At this point, the chili has been simmering for about 20 or 25 minutes, so pull off the lid and stick a fork in the potatoes to see if they have softened and check the rice for doneness. This is a thick chili. The rice is going to soak up a lot of that liquid that's in the pot, so if you want to have a soupier consistency, consider adding extra broth or water before the stewing stage. Taste test what you've got and season with salt and pepper to your liking. This recipe is going to make five servings, so lay out five meal prep containers and divide the contents of the pot evenly five ways. To the top of each dish, I'm going to divide half of a cup or 56 grams of cheddar cheese, and then each dish is also going to get one tablespoon or 14 grams of sour cream. Additionally, I'm going to sprinkle over some of the green onions that I cut up earlier, as well as a couple of the slices of the jalapeno. And that is our finished Big Boy Chili. Now the reason we're calling this Big Boy Chili is because one serving with a piece of the cornbread totals 1,051 calories with 56 grams of protein. That's a lot of calories. It's certainly going to put you well on your way to hitting your calorie targets while you are bulking. The cornbread muffins have about 220 calories each with 5 grams of protein, so if you didn't want to make these, just subtract that amount from the total in the last slide. When the chili has cooled, you can put on the lids, and to store the cornbread muffins, I just wrapped them in some foil and left them on the counter for the week. The meals will last up to 5 days in the fridge, and this is a great candidate for a freezer meal. Now let's talk reheating. To reheat the chili, I'll microwave it in 1 minute intervals, stirring each minute until it's hot. I've mentioned before that I don't personally microwave the plastic containers, even though it says they are microwave safe, so I'll move it into a glass bowl first. When the chili's got 20 or 30 seconds left, I'll throw one of the cornbread muffins in with it as well. For some textural variation, I think it's nice to add some kind of a crunch element to the top. That could be oyster crackers, tortilla chips, or potato chips like I have here. If you are on a bulking phase and trying to gain muscle, calories are king. In order to grow bigger, the calories that you intake through your diet must exceed the calories that you expend through your daily living and activity. If you're going to spend the time and energy in the gym to go hard to grow that muscle, don't waste it by not eating enough. If you consistently eat enough calories and train harder in the gym, you will almost certainly gain muscle and get stronger. Prioritize your protein intake and sleep to accompany that, and you'll find yourself well on your way to becoming the strongest person to ever live. Eating enough to grow is tough, especially for some of you hard gainers. I hope that with recipes like this that have a manageable amount of volume but are also energy dense will help you to get to where you want to be. The written version of this recipe is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, and best of luck with your bulking dreams. So long!